I know, I know, my Dia build is weird. Why am I running her on HP damage crit on Vorokasha when she still C0? Trust me, when I get her C1, her HP sands will be better than attack. And when I get C4, she won't even need emblem. I'm not coping, I swear. Guys, guys, trust me, trust me. It'll... I've had this video planned out for a very, very long time. I made a community post almost 8 months ago talking about the idea, but at the time I never actually had Dia. Now that I finally got, built, and played with her for a while, I feel confident enough to talk about her kit design with at least some level of credibility. Now, this has been a heavily discussed topic for over a year. You've probably seen a lot of videos or posts talking about her gameplay. My video is nothing new. A lot of ideas you see here may be inspired from other sources. With that being said, a lot of new team comps and characters have come out since then, especially with the Fontanian release. And this video is also meant to tackle some of those topics, not just the old stuff. And additionally, I'll try to go a step further by showing my usual calculations so that you actually visualize her damage output. Before we begin, take some time to pause and read through all of my disclaimers and design guidelines for the series. It'll be down below, in addition to music credits and social media links. But if you've read through all of it and you're ready to go, let's talk about Dia's kit. In her current state, I believe Dia is a really cool concept. It's just that the final iteration was poorly, poorly executed. Looking at how some people view Noelle in the same Jack of All Trades design, Dia is kind of in the same boat. She can deal pyro damage, more importantly, off field pyro damage. She can provide interruption resistance, and she can redirect the amount of damage the active character takes into herself. The horrible part is that in every aspect, she doesn't fully fulfill what is expected. Her damage output is subpar, her interruption resistance has like half uptime, her damage mitigation doesn't actually provide enough team survivability, and moreover, the mitigation doesn't even do anything else besides redirect the damage. Unlike my video on Venti's rework where I completely changed his kit, Diaz is going to keep the core mechanics, but with a lot of bells and whistles to provide better output and comfortable gameplay. Also, I know that many people like to play Dia in an on-field role. My rework is going to focus on her off-field potential, because we have like 9 on-field pyro units, do we really need a 10th? So now that I've covered the basics of her current kit, we can explore the full thing and come up with ideas to help rework it. A helpful reference for a Dia rework is Fushuan from Honkai Star Rail, since they actually do similar things. What I believe Fushuan does is feed more into her defensive utility and provide a smaller amount of offensive buffs. With Dia, I kinda want to go in the opposite direction, buff more of the offensive potential and defensive is less focused on. We'll still buff those defensive aspects of course, but as you'll see later on, I don't want to rework her to be a sustainer. Starting off, exploration passive and basic attacks will stay the same. Now let's dive into her skill. First change I want to implement is increasing the damage mitigation. As of right now, her mitigation at level 8 is 46%. I think a somewhat suitable buff is going to be around 75-80%. to I'll just use 75% in the examples down below. This does two things. One, it increases her team's survivability. And two, more of the damage she redirects will become Redmain's blood. This will matter later on. Next change. What if we made it so that any HP loss also gets redirected into Redmain's blood? This would be especially synergistic with some of the Fontanian characters, since their kit revolves around HP fluctuations. I think we should actually have two multipliers, one for damage mitigation and the other for HP draining mitigation. So while taking damage is mitigated by 75%, maybe draining HP is around 25%. Let's look at a few examples. So damage mitigation. If someone takes 1000 damage, 750 of that goes to Dia. If a character experiences an HP consumption of 1000, then only 250 of that goes to Dia. This kind of balances out the Fontanian characters because we still want that HP drain to be somewhat of a meaningful sacrifice. I'll talk more about her synergy with those characters later. As an additional survival mechanism, Redmain's blood will not be able to bring Dia down below 20% HP, and this will just ensure that she can't die off-field. I'll cover the self-healing passive later, which she will still have, but in the event a unit takes very heavy damage, we need to make sure Dia doesn't kick the bucket. Next change, the skill can now hit twice as fast. So instead of dealing a coordinated hit every 2.5 seconds, it's every 1.25. For personal damage, it's a pretty nice boost. She deals roughly twice as much damage in a non-reaction comp. 
In a reaction comp like Melt or Vape, we'd be keeping the ICD at 2.5 seconds, which means she's still going to be applying Pyro every other hit. Now the other major difference is that this allows us to burgeon more often. While I'm not reworking Dia to be a dedicated burgeon unit, this will still be a nice buff for anyone who would want to play her in that kind of team. To further buff that, I'll suggest increasing the radius on her explosion. Sometimes on a larger enemy, the coordinate attack doesn't actually reach the bloom cores on the ground, so increasing the radius allows that to happen. Next up is a duration buff. Her C2 makes it so that recasting her skill extends the timer by an additional 6 seconds, making it last 18 seconds. We'll scrap that part of the C2 and just implement that into her base kit. I'm also going to decrease the cooldown a little bit. So, it'll be an 18 second duration with an 18 second cooldown. In a 20-ish second rotation, there's still some downtime, but it's not as much. For a change in particle generation, I'm going to make it so that every hit of her skill's coordinated attack has a 50% chance to generate one pyro particle. This percentage is meant to balance out the faster hit time. If we look at the 18 second duration of her skill and the new 1.25 second hit cooldown, she can hit around 14 times and generate an average of 7 particles. Technically, her rate of particle generation is the same as it is now, but the higher uptime is what gives it more procs. At a 12 second duration, for example, she'd only generate 4 particles. Let's talk about her interruption resistance, or IR, next. Why did they make it so that the strongest level of IR is limited to 9 seconds? I don't know. But the base level is not enough against some of the stronger enemies. So instead, that passive on her A1 gets moved to the base skill, and that gets buffed even further. No matter what, IR is at the highest level and it's during the entire duration. This should allow for more flexibility in rotations now that your resistance isn't limited by a 9 second timer. I think something else we can do is remove the recasting mechanic of her skill. Honestly, the main reason I double click it is just so I can get that higher interruption bonus. But since that's going into her base kit, we don't really need it anymore. Just press and be done with it. But Spider, what if we need to reposition the field? You're absolutely right, person who was going to comment that before watching the rest of the video. Let's fix that. Remove the circle impact and just make the field follow the active character around. Also, the damage of her recast will just be implemented into the first multiplier. So you're still doing the same damage in less time. There. Now we really have no reason to recast her skill. And finally, Redmain's blood. I've seen no arguments against its idea, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The retaliation effect. Her skill and burst will now deal additional base damage based on a percentage of the red main's blood taken in the past 20 seconds. Just to throw a number out, let's say 9% of red main's blood at level 8. Now, to add on to that, only 100% of Dia's max HP can actually count towards that recorded amount. So if Dia has 40k HP and somehow records 60k red main's blood within that window, then that value will only record up to 40k. If Dia has 20,000 red main's blood recorded, and her multiplier is 9%, then her base damage is increased by 1800. If she only has like 5,000 damage recorded, then it's much lower at 450 bonus damage. This has the overall positive effect that taking damage or consuming your own HP will buff Dia's personal damage by a significant margin. There is a caveat, however, that it is dependent on the sources of HP loss. Against weaker enemies or in a team without HP consumption mechanics, you won't be draining as much HP, so the payback isn't as high. Vice versa, and you deal more damage. To try to compensate a little bit, we'll take from her C1 multiplier to further buff the damage. By default, Dia's skill will now deal an additional 3.6% of her max HP. It's not a huge increase, but it's mainly there to free up space so we can create a better C1 later on. Alright, let me count this all. 1, 2, 3, 4... 9 changes to just her skill. Now, we can talk about her burst, and this should be a shorter list. Hopefully. Number 1. Make the energy needs match the damage. Either you keep the damage the same, but lower the cost. Alternatively, we keep the 70 cost burst, so you still need to build up some more energy, but we heavily buff the multiplier so that the payoff is worth it. For my rework, I am just going to do both. The main goal is to set a reasonable damage expectation for whatever that burst cost may be. With the way I'm looking at buffing her damage output, I think a 50 or 60 cost burst should suffice. And, on a similar note of increasing damage, I'll also implement the C1 multiplier into her base kit, just like I did with the skill. That means at least an extra 6% HP per hit. Number 2. The skill's field won't disappear upon casting her burst. This basically allows Dia to continue generating particles even in her burst state, further lowering her energy needs. A decent quality of life buff. 
Next, let's talk about the infamous jump cancel. Like with many people, I believe the best way to address this is by changing her birth state into a stance change. You move around freely, preventing weird auto movement nonsense. But also, her attacks are considered normal attack animations, allowing her to proc Tsingcho or Yelon's burst. This further adds to her synergy with vape comps. But to keep the synergy with Vorukasha, which I will consider her signature set, it's still considered burst damage. Now, even without jump cancelling, her burst lasts for 4 seconds. Which means getting frozen is going to basically cancel the burst anyway, cause the duration will end by the time you unfreeze. So I propose making her immune to any stunning effects, especially freeze. Whether it's through self pyro application, or just putting it in the description, cannot be affected by frozen or electro charge, we need to find a way to prevent CC effects. And finally, same thing as her skill for Redmain's Blood, any of that collected in a 20 second window will be converted into a base damage bonus for every hit of her burst. So the main stuff is out of the way, we can look at her passives now. For A1, I'll be moving the A4 forward and this will be the self healing property. She'll still have her damage reduction too, but now without a 6 second restriction. And then since Dia is going to be taking more red main damage, we'll speed up the process to make sure she stays in a healthy state. So the new description is that Dia will receive 40% less damage when taking in red main's blood. Additionally, when she's below 40% HP, she will recover 15% of her max HP, and then recover an additional 5% every second for 5 seconds. This effect can be triggered once every 10 seconds, even if off-field. Overall, Dia's own survivability should be much improved. To balance the full uptime on her damage reduction, her 60% is now 40%. And to balance the new and improved cooldown, I just did a slight nerf to her healing so that it totals 40% instead of 50. And just to clarify, taking 40% less damage does not mean 40% less red mains blood is being recorded. If Dia has recorded 20,000 red mains blood, then that full number still contributes to her damage, but in terms of taking damage, she'll only take 12,000 damage over time. Next up, Dia's A4. This passive is now empty, so we can add a completely new bonus. I want to say that when Dia takes Red Main's blood damage, her attack will increase by 5% up to a max of 50%. This effect lasts for 16 seconds. What this is going to do is give her a massive attack buff, and this is meant to provide more of an incentive to get an HP sands. It'll still buff her overall damage, which is a good offensive buff. Oh, finally done with the base kit rework. I was a little worried at first that I was going overboard with the changes, but honestly, Dia kind of needs it. So what exactly does this make Dia? She's still going to be a hybrid unit that provides offensive and defensive utility. I focused more on her skill damage so that her off-field potential can rival Xiangling. Now, when we talk about defensive utility, what I wanted to do was make her a decent shielder alternative, while still relying somewhat on healers. If your teammates take enough damage, they will eventually die. And my main goal is to focus her defensive utility on comfort rather than survivability. You won't get one shot by enemies, you won't get staggered or thrown around, but it doesn't make you invincible. So that's the middle ground I chose. And then for energy, you still might want to build some, but she's less reliant on her burst to deal damage, and it's more optional on whether or not you want to burst every rotation. So now that I've covered her kit, we can take a look at her damage calculations, at least with the stats I have now. A few notes before we begin, I want to emphasize that Dia's field snapshots, which means the attack bonus from her A4 wouldn't kick in until the second cast. So this calculation round assumes that this damage is from the second rotation, when you already have Redmain's blood taken in. However, base damage bonuses don't snapshot, which means that even in the first rotation, Dia's damage will start to ramp up as her team takes more damage. For the build, I'm assuming she's using Vorukasha on both ADC and HDC, using her signature weapon, and that her red main's blood is around 20k recorded. I got this number after face tanking a bunch of damage for a set time, and after doing calculations here and there, I found 20k to be the average amount she'd accumulate over time. At level 8, this would be 9%, so your base damage bonus of her abilities is around 1800. Obviously, depending on your team, this number is highly subject to change. We will not be assuming Vaporize occurs just to show the baseline example of her damage. So, for her original kit, I looked at an ADC build at both C0 and C1. Side note, C1's HP scaling bonus actually made attack and HP somewhat similar, so showing an HP version wasn't necessary. After we take into account the reworks, Dia's new damage for both attack and HP is roughly the same. Her skill's increased damage and hit rate can deal around 200,000 damage, which is over 7 times the amount of damage her original skill does. Next, we can look at her burst output. This is the stuff I made much more quality of life changes to, 
as opposed to pure damage boosting. From here, we can see her burst is around doubled from what it usually would be, dealing around 265,000 damage. For a 4 second window, this is a much better output, and for a 50-60 cost burst, this damage feels like it matches the energy needs. If we add the whole thing up, we're getting a total of 462,000 damage within a 20 to 25 second rotation. That's without subsats for attack and crit bonuses, that's without other units to further buff that, like Bennett or Farina, that's without Vaporize or Melt to amplify it, but it's also without enemy defense and resistance. Once again, the actual numbers might not be as accurate, but the comparison values are. The other main comparison I want to look at is Golden Troop and Emblem of Severed Fate. Due to the loss of burst damage bonuses, as well as her 20% HP bonus for additional scalings, her overall output for Golden Troop is going to decrease by roughly 13% against Verukasha, making it a pretty rough dip. Emblem is also a slightly worse set at 13.5% worse, because going for that set heavily nerfs your skill damage. Not to mention, because you have a lower burst cost, higher particle generation, and more bounce between both her forms of damage, it's less needed to have Emblem in general. Since both skill and burst are going to be equally proportional in damage, I find it better to use Furukasha so that both get equally buffed. Now we can look at some of her new and improved constellations. Just a reminder that Dia is still a standard character, so these details are a lot more relevant. Since the HP scaling multipliers are no longer there at C1, we'll need to replace it with something else. I'll focus on making it a team damage buff. When a character takes damage while in Fiery Sanctum, they gain a 15% attack and HP bonus. Dia can also receive these bonuses while taking Red Mane's blood damage from off-field. This buff lasts for 10 seconds. This is just a small little something to further boost her and her team's damage and survivability. For Dia's personal damage, it's a very small increase, only around 4%. So the main utility is being a team buffer, not a personal one. C2's extension mechanic is no longer there either, so we can also fill in the gap. And since Dia's 50% damage boost is reliant on her teammates taking damage, I want to replace it with something else. So how about this? Every time Dia's skill hits an enemy, she will accumulate 1000 points of Red Mane's blood. This type of Red Mane's blood accumulation will not deal damage to Dia, but will share a max limit to Dia's base damage bonuses. Overall, it makes Dia much less reliant on characters taking damage for her to deal more damage. You could theoretically take no damage and still accumulate Red Mane's blood to boost her output. And the whole thing about max limit just means that if Dia is at 40k HP, the Red Mane's blood accumulated by her C2 will also contribute to that 40k limit. As an example calculation, let's say you deal 14 hits in its 18 second duration, and that's the average bonus you'd maintain. That means an extra 14,000 Red Mane is being recorded, equaling an additional 1260 damage. Compared to C0, we're looking at an additional 26% damage increase for the coordinated skill hits. For C3, her burst level increases by 3. A nice boost to her burst damage, and it'll be around 30% better than the C0 kit. For C4, it'll be slightly different. Dia will only regenerate energy through her punches, and she'll lose the self-healing. However, ending her burst state will heal the entire party, including herself, based on 8% of her max HP, plus 3% of the current Red Mane's blood accumulation. If we look at her build at a baseline, her burst healing will heal the entire party by around 4000 HP each. I mainly didn't want her to be a team sustainer at C0, but I was more open to giving her this role at a late constellation. In non farina teams, you may not require another healer to keep your team alive. You would just need Dia to burst consistently, and this gives you a free slot for a different unit. In a Farina comp, however, you may still need a dedicated healer, but Dia herself can contribute to the fanfare generation through this healing. And then on top of that, Dia gains 16.5 energy. This number doesn't change because the burst cost decrease was an indirect buff to this constellation. With 70 cost, she regenerates 23% of her cost. At 60, that becomes around 28%, and at 50 cost, it's 33%. In short, lower cost makes flat energy generation slightly more valuable. There's also an additional perk. I specifically said that the burst state only needs to end, not that Dia needs to complete her burst window. Dia could cast her burst and swap off field immediately and still trigger the healing effect, which is nice in situations where you don't want to go through the punching, but you do lose out on the energy by doing so. And I chose to remove the self-healing punches because her A1 should be more than enough to keep her alive now, so she can make do with the burst healing only. At C5, her skill is increased by 3 levels. This is good for her skill damage and the damage mitigation, which contributes more to her Red Mane's blood. Assuming we keep the Red Mane's value the same, it's around a 35% damage increase to her skill compared to C0. At C6, we're going to somewhat change the mechanics and add another new buff. So instead, Dia's burst crit rate and crit damage are increased by 15% and 40% respectively, 
and the max duration is increased by 2%. Additionally, when Dia is off healed when her Fiery Sanctum is active, Dia gains a Pyro Infusion that cannot be overridden, and her basic attack damage is increased by 7% of her max HP. This constellation keeps the same buffs as her old one, more crit rate and crit damage to her burst and a burst window extension. The crit is streamlined to be a bit more consistent rather than having a ramping up bonus, and the additional burst duration increases her hit count to be 16 instead of 10. The total increase in damage is like 2.5 times better than her damage at C0. I also added a basic attack infusion with HP scaling to allow for an on-field Dia playstyle. Compared to her C0 damage without the pyro infusion, the entire normal attack string at C6 deals around 2.2 times more damage. I know that usually a C6 has a wall of text full of crazy buffs, but since D is standard, I didn't want it to be too much. Honestly, for a standard unit, even just the burst and basic attacks might be too much. Additionally, with her dealing more punches, she'll generate 9 more energy in her burst, bringing her total energy generation to 25.5. So now that we've covered her new kit, we can discuss her new options for builds or team comps. Generally, all of the builds and teams you would use are the same, but now some options are a lot more or less viable than before. Starting off with artifact builds, the lower ER makes running emblem less needed, and since both her skill and burst damage got a massive boost, Furukasha is actually her real best set now. Weapon builds are generally the same, but maybe now you don't need to run an ER weapon like Skyward Pride. Beacon is still going to be her best. For team comps, let's discuss her options for both an off-field DPS and her on-field burst damage. Off-field, Shangling is likely going to be better due to her being able to vape every hit, but Dia isn't that far behind now. If you need a better defensive option without sacrificing a lot of damage, D is now your go-to. Replace Shangling in a Mono Pyro Linny comp and you can keep the Animo VV. Or replace her in a Chef Overload to reduce Pyro resistance for her personal damage. And to replace Shangli, maybe Burn Melt for Ganyu or Risley would work. For direct damage, vaporize her skill hits with any good Hydro appliers like Tsingcho, Yelon, or Kokomi. To utilize her burst properly, everything should be the same with the viable teams. In a Vaporize comp, we have the new addition that Dia can now trigger the coordinated attacks from Tsingcho and Yelon, allowing her to vape more consistently. You can also use her as a Burgeon trigger. While it's not her most optimal playstyle, the buff I did to her hit speed and explosion range makes it much more consistent and easier to trigger. And now for a few specific units that can work well with her. First one is Bennett. The reason why I didn't think it was a big deal to have her C0 not give healing was because you would naturally slot her with Bennett her skill snapshots, so you can gain a massive attack buff without having to worry about leaving the field. And Bennett provides healing to your party, allowing him to act as your sustainer. Another that has an interesting interaction is Farina. Since Dia will take less red main damage, this actually means Farina will gain less fanfare when she's in the party. But if you're in a team comp where the onfielder is more prone to dying, such as Articuno or Klee, Dia can slow down their HP draining and allow them to end up at half health a lot later. This is kind of a niche trade-off, but the gist is that you trade fanfare generation for potential survivability. I also want to discuss some other Fontanian characters who can use this HP draining mechanic. Linny and Nuvalet drain HP, and regain that HP exactly. Now that Dia takes some of that HP draining, they actually become HP positive in their restoring rather than HP neutral, so they can take more damage without an additional healer. Although, for Linny, you bring benefit for the attack buff anyway, so it's more of a Nuvalet buff. Risley, however, is a more interesting case. He has this mechanic where if he's above 50% HP, his normal attacks deal more damage and drain him. Additionally, if he's below 60% HP, his charge attack deals more damage and heals him, but it has a 5 second cooldown. He gets this weird state where his HP drains faster than the cooldown, and he stops doing enhanced normal attacks for a bit. I'm not entirely sure how much this would help, but Dia's new ability to redirect HP draining would drain Risley a bit slower, giving him more health to deal enhanced attacks. Ideally, it could end up timing itself perfectly so that Risley's cooldown refreshes right when he hits 50% HP again. Alright everyone, that's going to do it for my Dia rework concept. If you liked the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing to support the channel. Let me know in the comments what you liked or what you would change. Since I mainly covered an idea for a skill-oriented offensive unit, feel free to share alternate ideas for what you have for a more defensive or burst-reliant playstyle. Thanks again for watching everyone! I will see you next time. Bye!